Dr. Banner. Now might be a really good time for you to get angry. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. Wait, you wanna know my secret? I am a Blender user. First of all, let me tell you the backstory. I was playing with the Geometry Notes the other day and suddenly got this idea to make the hull transformation effect. We could take the position data of each point of hull and transfer them to Bruce, making him the incredible hull. No need for gamma rays. Just a few notes. So, to get started, I needed two models, Bruce Banner and Hulk. Does he have a surname? I opened up Character Creator and created both of the characters and exported them to Blender. Using a character generator application like Reolution Character Creator was a kinda necessary for this project, but if you don't have access to Character Creator, it's fine, you can use almost any character generator applications out there. Here I use a free application called MakeHuman to grow this baby into a man and then change his gender. Well, that's awkward. Open a new Blender project and import our two characters. Here I use a free CC3 add-on for Blender to import and automatically set material for the characters. Also, I use Autorig Pro to rig Bruce Banner's model. Again, you can use a free alternative like Mixamo for that. I move the Hulk object to a new collection. Let's delete both characters, shirt and trousers. We don't need them. Now I want to get rid of any deformations in the Hulk model created by its rig. I want the original undeformed mesh. So select all the objects in the Hulk collection, Alt P and clean the parent and keep the transform. Delete the armature and all the armature modifiers from every object. To get more smooth morphing animation, I want to match this Hulk model as much as I can with our Banner's model. So select Banner's body and disable its armature to see its true form. And then select our Hulk model. Go to edit mode and scale it to match Banner. Here try to match the eye sockets. It will give the best result when morphing especially around the head. Now disable the Hulk collection and select our Banner's body. Go to Geometry Nodes workspace and add a new Geo Node modifier. Give it a name and put it before the armature modifier. Pin the node setup. Now find the object you need to morph into, in this case Hulk's body object, and drag it to the setup. Change it to relative and let's rename it to morph to object. Drag the object input to the group input node so we can change it from the outside. In the group properties, I gave the input the same name. Now we need to change the position data of Bruce Banner's body. For that, add a set position node. Now, as I said earlier, we need to grab the position data of the Hulk model and transfer them to Bruce Banner's body. So, drag from this geometry output and search for transfer attribute node. Since we want to transfer the position data of each point and the position is a vector value, change this attribute type to vector and for the attribute, plug a position node. Now let's transfer this data to Banner's body. Drag the output to this position input. Immediately it worked. Well, kind of. We have a few glitches in some small areas like mouth and fingers. This is happening because when transferring the data, it doesn't know which position data should go to which point. By default, transfer attribute node uses this nearest face option method which finds the closest phase and transfer the data to those points. But we can fix these glitches easily because we created our two characters using a character generator. In my case, character creator. One thing common about almost all the character generator applications is whatever the character you make, they always have the same topology. 
amount of faces or vertices you have on a baby is exactly the same as in an adult muscular man and and they all form in a same way in other words we make different characters by simply repositioning those vertices so what we can do is instead of finding any closer space we can match the two models point to point by changing this method to index now all bruce is just angry but we need a blending between banner and how for that i duplicate this position node. you can use this exact one but just to give you guys a clear idea i duplicate this add a color mix node connect the position data of the banner to the top socket and Hulk's position data to the second socket. Now, when I change the factor from 0 to 1, our Bruce becomes angry and becomes the incredible Hulk. I also want to create a controller for the Morphe, just like in my advanced suit up video and hexagonal shield video, and also like in my logo animation video. I know I do this a lot, but I mean, come on, it's handy to have a controller. Instead of just making Banner's whole body move to Hulk, I can just make his head into Hulk. So, to create the controller, just like in my previous videos, add an empty sphere. Rename it to something like Morph Controller. Drag that into our node setup. Change it to relative. That's important. Now, let's make that mask by calculating the distance between the origin point of the sphere and the position of each point. Grab from the location output and search for vector map distance node and plug the position data into the other socket. Now we calculated the distance. Let's clamp it to 0 to 1 range. Search for map range node. Now to clamp every value outside of the sphere, we need to set the max value to the radius of the sphere. Since our empty sphere's scale is equal to the radius, let's use it for for max soccer. Now I swap these two values to inverse our mask. Plug it to factor. We can't really see the difference actually, so let's clamp it even more by using a color ramp. Change the sliders to get a gradient like this. Now we can control the morphing of half transformation by changing the location and the scale of this sphere. Let's say you want to exclude a certain area from the Morphe. You can use more than one controller and position them to do that. But I recommend using vertex groups and painting out those areas that you want to exclude. So how are we going to do that? Duplicate this group output node to here and add a new input. Give it a name and change it to flow. And here in the modifiers tab, click on this icon and change it to an attribute input. Now in the mesh data, create a new vertex group and give it a name. Copy that name and paste it into our input. That way we can link our vertex group to the exclude input. Select our vertex group, go to weight paint mode and do a weight paint job. Paint out the areas you don't want to move. Red is equal to a value of 1 and blue is equal to the value of 0. Since we want to exclude this area, I plug this into a map range node and reverse it. Then using a map node, I multiply it with our current mass. Now you can see that area is not morphing, although it is inside the sphere. So if you want to exclude a certain area from morphing, then just do a weight paint on that area. I remove the vertex weight as I don't want it right now. So this is our morphing setup, but you can see we don't make any effect on our materials. In order to affect our materials, we need to bring our mass or our gradient to the material setup. For that, drag from here and plug it into a new output socket. Now, go to the shade editor. Add a new input attribute node and copy paste our attribute name. Let's add a diffuse BSDF and alt right click drag over two shaders to get a mix shader node and plug this factor to the mix factor change the color to green you can see it's working well you only see the head area changing because character creator created separate materials for the different parts of the body right now we are in the head material 
but this diffuse shader is not what we want right we want our hulk's head material to replace this so what i'm going to do is i select our corresponding hulk material and select all its nodes except for the material output node and hit ctrl g to group them hit tab and come out of the group node and let's rename the group node to the head now go to our bruce banners material and shift a under groups find that head group and replace our diffuse shader with it it is working now all we have to do is repeat this to every other material i know it's too much work but it's fine just think about the end results if you're using some other character generator it will probably be two or three materials Now we can use this GeoNode setup as kind of a preset and add it to the other objects like eyes and mouth and etc. Make sure to put the modifier before the armature modifier and select the correct Hulk object to morph to. Also make sure the names are assigned correctly. And just like that, we have our Hulk transformation setup ready to animate. And another great thing about this is, since we are using the mesh data of both models, you can use both of their shape keys at the same time. For example, Bruce Banner shows one emotion and Hulk shows totally different emotion. And if you want Hulk to be a lot bigger than Bruce, you can simply scale him up using your rig. So this is how I created the half transformation effect using Blender. You can use these techniques and mix them up to achieve different morphing animations. If you are interested in how I created the animation and rendering part of the tutorial then ask it below in the comment section with your thoughts on this video. And a special thanks to all the Patreon members for making these videos possible. As usual, all the demo files, project files and extra details will be available for Patreon members. So I hope you learned something cool, something new, I mean, that's what we like to do. We not only create stuff, we let you create with us. Hit the like button and comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to HelloFX Learn so you won't miss out when the next video drops. So until next time, 